Right now, I'm going to give you 15 mistakes that you need to avoid when you first get your pit bull puppy, and we're starting right now. Hey, how's it going? My name is Ruben. If you're new to the channel, we're all about the bull breeds, killing the bad stereotypes on these breeds and becoming better owners. I'm reflecting on the mistakes that I made when I first got my dog. Now, I don't have an American pit bull terrier. I actually have American bully, but this doesn't only you know resonate with just pit bull owners. Now, before we get into the mistakes, I'm very excited. We're actually launching the Build Your Bully program. Essentially, what it is, it's a program where we're going to go over raw feeding, you know, like a raw feeding masterclass for beginners or anybody that's interested in transitioning their dog. We're going to also do exercises that help build your dog's muscles. They're going to be basic do-it-yourself exercises at home. It doesn't require a lot of equipment. They're very simple, but they're very effective. And then we're going to be going over some top of the line products like what you see on your screen. So this will be in the Build Your Bully program and we're going to be launching it very soon. If you want early access to the program, you can hit that link in the description where you could go sign up. Let's get into the mistakes that I see a lot of owners make. Number one, you need to know the health and genetics of your dog's parents. Now, when you first get your puppy, I see a lot of owners not actually looking at what the parents look like or the health condition of their parents, if they have any uh, bad allergies, if they have bad reactions like allergic reactions, hip dysplasia, um, the actual build of their dog. I see a lot of owners ask me, you know, is my dog's head going to get super big? you know, first thing I'm going to say is what does the parents look like? So stuff like that, a lot of health conditions that people overlook. Number two on the list, have the proper gear for your dog. Now, I know a lot of owners, they get excited to buy the food, to buy the, the bowls. Your dog is going to grow bigger over time. Do you have the right size collar for them? Do you have the right training equipment? Do you have the right size? Are you going to create your dog? So you need the right size crate, the right size bed. You know, a puppy only stays a puppy for little, you know, not a long time. They grow really fast. They grow really fast. So you definitely want to get the gear. Think long term. Your puppy's going to get big no matter what. Number three is have the proper training in place. Now, the dog owners out there that been have dogs, you know, they had dogs all their life. They know how to train their dogs. They have their own methods or they, uh, you know, learned over time. That's great and all. You need to have a system for what you're, or how you're going to train your dog. Now, the new owners, you need to at least the minimum that you could do is look on YouTube how to train your dog. All right. If you don't have the basic fundamentals down, then um, it's not going to be good. You're going to have problems in the future that are easily avoidable if you take the time to put in right now. Fourth mistake I see is people are not puppy proof in their house. And what I mean by this is, okay, puppies they're going to chew on stuff. Puppies are going to poop. They're going to pee in the house. Maybe you'll have a room where the puppy stays until it's fully potty trained. Then you give them a little bit more freedom around the house. Fifth mistake I see owners make is they don't know what diet they want their new puppy to be on and they don't set a budget for it. Now, I know a lot of dogs have health problems due to their diet. It's directly correlated with their diet and they need to switch it up and owners are now scrambling to make the switch to like, let's say a raw feeding. So when you first get your pup, this kind of reflects back to the number one mistake that people make or the first one on my list is know the parents, but you definitely need to know what kind of diet you want them to have. Study your kibbles um, if that's what the route you're gonna go to. Study the raw feeding if you're into raw feeding. By the way, the Build Your Bully program is gonna launch soon and we can show you how to transition to raw feeding There'll be a link in the description, but you need to have a budget set aside. Just think about when you get a puppy, there's more expenses that come with it. You're not just going to all of a sudden, it's going to feed itself pretty much. It's not going to do that. You're going to have to have a budget set aside for them. Maybe $50 a month, $100 a month dedicated to just their food. And we always want them to feed them the best. So uh, just keep that in mind. A big mistake I see owners make, which is number six on the list, is have an emergency budget for vet visits and emergencies. What I do is I keep a budget set aside for just in case he has to have an emergency surgery, he needs uh, medications for another breakout, um, if you get an ear infection, just anything, anything can happen to your dog, a torn ACL, if you're, you know, having playtime, just set aside a budget. It could be 200 to 500 to a thousand dollars dedicated to your dog just in case they get injured or they need to go into the vet that's a big mistake you need to avoid 
Number seven on the list is set boundaries in your house. Now, what I mean by this is a puppy, I feel like, needs to deserve their freedom around the house, okay? You get a puppy, the crate is where it really starts. Maybe you want to um, keep a room for them or like a gate around the house where you, you know, you dedicate a certain spot for them. And it doesn't just apply to that. So, like, if you're an owner that doesn't want your dog on the couches, you need to set that boundary for them and make sure that they know they're not allowed on the couches. They're not allowed to run out the front door. That's like a threshold. Yeah, they're not allowed to get on the counters. They're not allowed to pick on the cat if you have a cat. Now, number eight on my list is very controversial. I know a lot of people are gonna give me some crap for this, but please do not treat your dog like a human, all right? I see a lot of owners, they're treating their dog like a human, talking to them like they're humans thinking that dogs are rational. But you gotta know the basic needs of your dog. You can't just treat them like a human. You can't let them sit at the table and you know literally eat off the table. That's bad manners. Hey, if you like doing that stuff, that's all on you. That's why I'm saying it's very controversial, but I advise not to treat your dog like a human. Treat it like an animal. It's an animal at the end of the day. It's a hound. These, these hounds have prey drive. They need satisfaction in different ways other than getting treated like a human. Number nine on my list, know the breed that you are working with or that you own, okay? So uh, a lot of controversy comes from the pit bull or the bully breeds. A lot of people don't know that their dog is actually not a pit bull. It's probably like a cross between multiple bull breeds and at the end of the day, it's like a watered down pit bull. It's a mix or a mutt. Either way, it's not purebred. The only way you could really tell is through a pedigree and through the bloodlines, okay? Uh, a reputable bloodline. So you, you can't just assume that my dog is a pit bull. If you adopt a dog from a shelter, you're not sure what it is, don't just say it's a pit bull, all right? Just uh, acknowledge that it's a mix, you know what I mean, or mutt. There's nothing wrong with that. Number 10 on my list, avoid this mistake. A lot of owners do not have a plan for the exercise needs of your dog. And what I mean by that is owners all of a sudden get like this puppy fever and they're like, Okay, let's make the jump of getting a new puppy. My kid wants a puppy, but they have no one to walk the dog, no one to exercise it, no one to train it, no one to feed it. Everyone's working a nine to five. These are mistakes that you would want to avoid. You need to have a plan, okay? Is my kid going to walk the dog? Am I going to walk the dog? Is my spouse going to walk the dog? These are the kind of plans that you need, and it's very important that the dog gets this because that's what makes them thrive. That's what makes them be good in the house. That's what makes them build a companion and relationship between y'all. So it's very important. Number 11 on my list, and this is a big controversial one as well, is they're getting the dog too soon when the dog that they have at the home is not fully trained or is aggressive. So avoid getting a new puppy if your dog at home is not 100% to your standard, okay? If you have an untrained dog, I suggest or I advise you, do not get a new puppy until yours is fully trained. Your dog at home might not be fully trained or they might be aggressive towards other dogs and you need to keep that, or you need to keep note of that. Number 12, you need to avoid exercise and weight pulling too early for your puppy. Now it's very detrimental to your dog to start heavy exercises like this way too early. And I'm talking about, I've seen people wanting to start weight pulling their dog at six months to a year. I highly suggest that you wait until they're 24 months or two years old to start actually introducing some of these heavy, you know, exercise, you know, drills and what have you. That involves weight pulling, maybe the parachute, a weight vest. These are all things that enhance their exercises. You don't want the dog to grow up with bad joints and you're definitely gonna have uh, problems in the future if you start too early. So, number 13, do not fall for all the supplements marketed to you. Now, what I mean by this is you have a ton of brands. Um, I'm not gonna name any brands right now, but they have protein boosters, they have supplements, meal enhancements, um, again, more supplements, vitamins, all these things that they say that can help your puppy grow. Just do not fall for that too early, okay? Actually do some research in what's in these supplements. My my thing is you got to start with the diet first, all right? Maybe a raw diet could be good for your dog and you don't need none of that stuff. Maybe you want to feed kibble and you might need some of that stuff to enhance the kibble to make it even better. Really dial that down. Get it down to the point where you're very comfortable with what you're feeding them 
If your dog is not showing some growth or a shiny coat, whatever your goal is for the health of your dog, then you want to start adding in some nutrients and supplements and proteins. Number 14, I see owners not socializing their dog enough. Of course, you want to socialize with other dogs and humans. That's that's a must. But I'm saying, um, you know, they might be scared of the water. They might be scared of a toy that your kid has. They Just stuff like that, you know, you just never know with your dog. So you definitely want to socialize as much as possible. Now, number 15, a big mistake. The last mistake that I need to plant this in your head, I see owners make is they're not checking their dog's dental hygiene, okay? Their dog's dental hygiene deteriorates over time. Their teeth break, their teeth get rotten, and they have stinky breath, all right? It's not just about the stinky breath. It's about, you don't know what it feels like when they're actually chewing. They might have some pain because the tooth is rotten or it's just falling apart and it hurts them. Their teeth break, their teeth are, you know, the gums are swollen. This could be painful for our dogs and you don't even know it. So that's why it's a big mistake that I see that owners need to be aware of. You need to check their dental hygiene. Now I do have another video with 14 tips for new pit bull owners that you could check out. If you're getting a new puppy, I will put that in the end screen. We could go click on that video. And as always, Keep killing the bad stereotypes. Becoming better owners. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.